Hi guys and uh, welcome to another video. This is a very quick one, but it's something that comes up a lot and somebody asked me today about the difference between high speed steel and tungsten carbide and when I might use them. Okay, well there's an obvious answer to that, that is that if you can use a, a tungsten carbide bit um, and you've got the right shape and you're just roughing, this is a bit of a bright bar and you can get a nice finish. You can take a lot of metal off, you can work them hard um, and they last a long time and this particular one, the CNMG has got eight potential cutting edges on it because if you use these four tips up you can flip it around, use it in a different holder as like a roughing tool and use these four tips. Okay, and that's a good thing. Makes them economical, it means you can remove a lot of metal before you even need to change an insert. All right, now if we turn to high speed steel, the obvious advantage is you can make what you like. This is a little thing that we made in an earlier video um, to cut an internal Acme thread on the little uh, vice project that we were building and following along with Tom Lipton. So check out that video. Um, this is a tool that we made and it, and it worked to cut an internal Acme thread and that's ground for us from some uh, 3 8 no sorry, yeah 3 8 square high speed steel. And really with high speed steel you can make pretty much anything you like. The world is your oyster. Your, your, if you've got a grinder and you just keep it cool by quenching it occasionally, there's not much you can't make, not much you can't turn and mill if you've got a you know, these few tool holders, boring heads, fly cutters, and a lathe in a mill. You've really got few limits, except if you want to machine something which is nearly as hard as tool steel, then you've got to go back to tungsten carbide. But there is another reason to switch, and that's my main reason for switching. And it's something that a lot of people probably come across in home shops where you're using one lathe to do lots of jobs and that is when you want to take uh, finer cuts at lower surface speed because you're on a small diameter and your spindle speeds don't go high enough this lathe only goes up to a thousand rpm spindle speeds don't go high enough to get a really good finish with tungsten carbide and I'll, I'll just as an example we'll take this bit of two inch bar and we'll say we want to go to inch and three quarters Okay, so let's split it down into a 50 cut, 100 cut, and 100 cut. I think that's 250. And plus or minus 2,000. We'll see how we go with a tungsten carbide tool. And that should be absolutely fine and give us a really nice finish. So let's try. All right, so we'll come in, we'll touch off, and we'll take, say, a 100 thou cut at, I think I've got 610 RPMs on a 2 inch bar. We'll see what kind of finish we get. Okay, well for a start we got this kind of funny finish, a bit of chatter, I don't know if it's chatter or a slight rub, probably from this edge of the tool, these tools, I don't know, sometimes they do that. Anyway, what I've done is I've slightly, slightly angled the tool post just to rotate the tip of the tool this way a little bit, so I've got a flatter edge here and a little bit more clearance here, I don't know if you can see that. I've turned the tool like this, just a little bit. And that has completely sorted out the finish. So we'll carry on a little bit with a 100 thou cut and see how we go. We'll mic it, we'll set the DRO and we'll try and hit our diameter in three cuts with a uh, 100, 150, roughly. Okay, here goes. <laughs> Alright, 
the only thing I didn't like about that was the way the chips are breaking or not breaking. So we'll coarsen the feed up just a little bit for the next cut. Okay, it turns out it wasn't a two inch bar, it's an inch and three quarters bar. So let's say we're gonna to wanna to hit inch and a half. And we're now at one, six, six, five. Um, let's split that down in two cuts then. So we got uh, 160 thou odd to go. Let's just take 80 thou per cut with a slightly coarser feed and see how we do. That was uh, breaking the chips a little bit better and making a sort of nice chip there, it's still slinging them around a bit, but you can probably live with that. Um, and we'll do a measurement, we'll take the final cut according to this. We got 78 foul to go, so that's a, roughly another 80. We'll do a measurement, we'll resync the DRO and we'll see if we can hit diameter, good finish. Um, and plus or minus a thou would be nice. Let's try. Okay, my micrometer says 1579, my DRO says 1578. So we're turning about, with, with that cut and that pressure on the tool, we're turning about a thou over what the DRO says. So let's go for exactly inch and a half on the DRO and hope that we're inch and a half or plus one thou. Uh, let's try again. I'm going to have to do this two handed. Right, according to this, we are plus seven tenths, which is the kind of thing we like. You could polish that very slightly and be well within the, your tolerance of, you know, plus or minus a thou. In fact, within half a thou, if you just polished that very lightly, you'd have a really nice finish and be a few tenths over size, and nobody's gonna complain with that. So if you wanna take reasonably heavy cuts, and you can get your surface speed up, um, these are awesome. Just don't try and end up with maybe 10 or 20 thou to cut, because I'll show you where the problems start um, with the next few passes. Okay, let's imagine now that we wanna take the first inch of this shaft down to one inch from inch and a half and let's also imagine that it's a really critical diameter you know it's going to be a, have something pushed on the end of it or whatever you want this within a tenth or two okay and hopefully we'll see some of the problems that you get with tungsten carbide so um, from inch and a half we've got another half inch of material to remove so I'll take 150 thou, 150 thou, that'll be 300. And then we'll see what we've got left. Um, we want one inch of the shaft down to one inch in diameter. So I'll do a little bit of that off camera. Yeah, that was 
50s there, still a nice finish. Let's do one more. Still a nice finish. Okay, we're now at 1219. The DRO says 1218 and 9 tenths, which is about as close as you can expect. In fact, it's damn good. <laughs> okay, now, so we got 219 thou to come off. Well, if we could split that into two cuts just over 100. Let's wind a tool in so we've got a hundred to go. Let's go to uh, inch one hundred thou. Still got a really nice finish. Um, one zero nine nine two. Don't know why that's moved. Probably a bit of free play in my top slide, cross slide. What do we got on the mic? Inch nine nine inch nine nine and five tenths inch nine nine and six tenths you can't I'm very impressed with this read at you can't beat that but again we're taking fairly consistent cuts and keeping the tool pressure similar throughout the process and that's the way tungsten carbide likes to work so we want to try and hit uh, inch dead so uh, we'll do that we actually went a tenth under which again is pretty good in fact it's kind of better than I was hoping for I was hoping to show you some of the problems um, that you can run into with carbide so we'll go a bit smaller still and uh, supposing we now want to take a finer cut we want to take uh, half inch half inch of this shaft down ooh, 50 thou all right, let's see what happens. Uh, oh dear, our finish has gone all teary. Um, and that happens with some materials, with a finer cut, with a carbide tool. So if you're um, having to take you know, lighter cuts, you can run into problems, particularly as your diameter and your surface speed falls. And let's just see if we can get that back by increasing the RPM on this section. Sometimes the finish will come back and you can still take lighter cuts if you've got the RPM to do it. So let's try that.
actually I think that got worse and the chips turned into spirals um, that were going everywhere long spirals risk getting tangled up uh, and that finish there's a lot of polishing to do if you want to get those lines out and it's going to be difficult to work accurately um, let's also see how the accuracy is okay let's suppose now we actually want 940 on that section of the of the part now we know it's not really going to like taking a light cut with a carbide tools when we drop from a hundred and from a hundred thou to fifty thou we really we really didn't get a good finish it started tearing and just not cutting so nicely uh, and increasing the speed didn't really help what can we do well I'm going to switch to high speed steel and see what happens right I've ground a little high speed steel tool here still a bit sharp at the tip the first thing I'm going to do is hone it you can't see it there I'll focus come on the iPhones right the first thing I'm going to do is hone it because it's pretty rough off the grinder standard grind a little bit of clearance on each of the faces and nothing fancy right we're going in with a light light stoning spiny angle on top the stone across it a few times now I'm hoping you can see there where the stone has touched the cutting edge just made it a little bit better than the grinder finish and I'll put a tiny nose radius on it and we'll see if we can get a result okay I think I think we actually said we were going to aim for 940 I'm just taking a measurement 9, 4, 7 and 8 tenths so we've got 7 and a bit of thad to come off so suppose we want to hit this really dead on and polish it down to 940 let's take the 7 thou okay Actually have a measurement of 942 after that first cut so I went ahead and I took the two thou off now you can see that's an okay finish um, bear in mind I can't really get good surface high surface speed anymore to run tungsten carbide tool steel high speed steel just isn't so critical on speed and depth of cut I've not got any nasty lines in here so let's mic it up see if we can polish it absolutely on size. Okay we've got 940 and 6 tenths. I'm guessing 6 tenths will polish off here very easily. Okay just a light polish with some 320 grit. <laughs> that is repeatable just lock it on there jiggling 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 we actually okay nine three nine nine half of one tenth under and probably if I take the odd yeah we're, we're within a half a tenth the measurement resolution limit on this micrometer is half a tenth and we're within that and nobody's ever complain going to complain if you can do that um, on an old lathe like this 
but the way to do it sometimes if your diameter is getting smaller and you really want to sneak up on it at the last thou, if it's critical you don't want to overshoot, um, is with high speed steel and light cuts. Um, just seems to work better than tungsten carbide. Tungsten carbide really that likes to be worked and pushed in hard. It kind of cuts because it's hard, not because it's sharp. It bulldozes material out of the way. And that just happens better uh, with a heavy cut and a higher surface speed. So again, I haven't, I probably haven't shown this particularly well, but the reason I normally switch down to high speed steel is if I need to make fine cuts on smaller diameters. Um, it's just it works better with this lathe and I can work with greater accuracy. So I hope that helps. Thank you for watching. Good night.